Hey guys, today we are talking about Catalyst Browse. This free software allows you to use gyroscopic data recorded by recent Sony cameras for some pretty awesome stabilization, as we can see here with a quick before and after. I made a video on the basics of how to use Catalyst, which you can find right here. But since then, a few of you guys have asked me follow-up questions. So today we have some quick tips to cover those off and to help you get the best out of this awesome but almost hidden feature. You'll find timestamps and links in the description. And if you enjoy this video, then like, subscribe, and let me know any questions or thoughts down in the comments. First question, what frame rates will Catalyst stabilization work on? The answer is everything up to 60 frames per second. So depending on whether you're shooting in PAL or NTSC mode, that means you're covered at 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. Pretty much everything you would use for normal speed playback rather than slow motion. Nice. What about resolution? Well, Catalyst works great on 1080p and 4K, so you're gonna be covered in almost every situation. Now, I don't have a shiny new Sony A1 to test, so I can't comment with certainty about 8K, but I imagine if it's not supported already, it will be in a future software update. Next common question. Do you always need to shoot with a fast shutter speed? Answer, kind of, but the real answer is a bit more involved. The reason Catalyst will give you better results with a higher shutter speed is because higher shutter speeds reduce motion blur. When you have a lot of motion blur captured in each frame of your footage, the stabilization from Catalyst will still make that footage smoother by reducing the physical shaking and jittering movements, but it can't do anything about that motion blur which is already baked in. This can lead to results that look more strange and disconcerting than post-1990s Michael Jackson. So the key is the amount of motion. You can get solid results at 1 over 50 shutter if you're moving very slowly, like this. In my testing, I even got some reasonable looking results at even slower shutter speeds by keeping my camera movements as slow and smooth as possible. But as soon as you get to a moderate walking pace, I'd recommend a higher shutter speed to avoid results like this. One over 200 shutter seemed okay for me most of the time, and I had results that looked okay for running from about one over 400. However, the only real downside of even faster shutter speeds like 1 over 1000 is the potential for any motion in your shots to look a bit more choppy. In a daytime vlog scenario or for landscape shots, you might not have lots of motion in your footage, so that might not matter, and you can crank up your shutter speed, but if light is more limited or subject movements start to look really unnatural, you might need to slow it down a bit and find a balance. So there is no magic formula here. You don't have to use a fast shutter speed to get good results with Catalyst, provided the camera and subject movement are minimal. But as motion of subject and camera increases, faster shutter speed becomes more and more helpful. How fast you need will depend on the speed and amount of that motion. So that's the principle, and if you're in doubt, I recommend leaning towards a faster shutter. Another common question, do I need to turn off stabilization when I shoot if I'm going to use Catalyst? Like many things in life, the unhelpful answer to this question is it depends. With in-body image stabilization, which Sony calls in-body steady shot, I find Catalyst works well, whether it's turned on or off, and I've struggled to really spot noticeable differences. In lens stabilization or optical steady shot, OSS, in Sony terminology is more variable. Using the OSS of the 16 to 50 kit lens, which you might have from a crop body Sony camera, Catalyst works fine and provides the usual good results whether OSS is switched on or off. But the OSS of my 18 to 105 G lens is a different story. With this lens, when OSS is switched on, gyro data doesn't seem to record and therefore you can't use Catalyst on the resulting footage. The lens will work fine with Catalyst when OSS is switched off. So there is some inconsistency here, which means if you're gonna shoot with a lens that has built-in stabilization, I strongly recommend testing it to see if that stabilization is gonna work with Catalyst or not before you shoot anything important. And how about digital stabilization, which Sony calls Active Steady Shot because they didn't already have enough confusing and pointless brand names for all these things. In my experience testing with the Sony ZV-1, Catalyst can still process footage shot with Active Steady Shot, but it actually gives you results that are more strange and shakier than my understanding of why the Kardashians are famous. Okay, so the dad was a lawyer at a murder trial and one of the daughters had a sex tape, 
now they're all incredibly wealthy and influential. Because... So, if you're using digital stabilization, I'd advise you to switch from active to standard steady sharp. And while I'm not lucky enough to have an A7S III or A1 to test this on, I would expect their digital stabilization to work similarly to the ZV-1, and you're seeing the results with standard steady sharp work great right here. So, can you shoot with stabilization turned on and then use Catalyst and get good results? Yes, in some circumstances. If you want to be completely safe and you know for certain you're only going to use catalyst stabilization, then turn all your stabilization off. But perhaps you're like me and will use catalyst on some shots, but then leave others because the stabilization you used when shooting has done a good enough job. In that situation, then shooting with stabilization switched on, provided you know it works okay with catalyst, can actually save a whole bunch of post-processing time and really improve your workflow. So that's a high level guide to what usually works and what usually doesn't, but always test with the exact setup that you're going to use. And let me know if you find out anything interesting in the comments. Okay, so we've covered some common questions about settings and compatibility. Let's finish off with some tips you can use when you're actually shooting. We know Catalyst crops into your image when stabilizing. So to counter this, I recommend shooting slightly wider or taking a step or two further back than you otherwise would to ensure your final shot is framed the way that you would like it to be. On a similar note, I recommend shooting in 4K wherever possible. That gives you much more resolution than 1080p. So there's more headroom when you crop in to stabilize before you can see any loss in footage quality. When it comes to moving shots, Catalyst can give great results, like what you're seeing here where the camera seems to be gliding through space. But if you want the real gimbal-like results, then make sure you practice ninja walking as smoothly as possible and keeping your grip centered and static. With a bit of practice, you can definitely get better results than my zero effort examples that you've been seeing. And on a final related note, if you shoot with a gimbal, you can still try using Catalyst on the footage afterwards and potentially get even smoother results, like icing on a cake, but with much less diabetes risk. And that brings us to the end for today. A massive thank you for watching, especially making it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed the video, then like, subscribe, and let me know any questions or thoughts down in the comments. But most importantly, until next time, take it easy.